Welcome back to Sleep Better TV. I'm Scott Drake. We continue our discussion about uh, sleep breathing disorders and their treatment. My guest is Dr. Larry Pribble with the Center for TMJ and Sleep Apnea in Independence, Missouri. So doctor, first, what does a first visit look like when a patient goes to the dentist for a sleep evaluation? Well, when they come into our office, we uh, first evaluate their uh, dentition condition, uh, evaluate their bone, health of their gums. We also check uh, their range of motion to see uh, how much does their mandible move? Can they open wide? Can they move their jaw around easily? Is their jaw and their TMJ uh, healthy? And that's very important as well. We also use a pharyngometer and a rhinometer to evaluate the size of a patient's airway and the airway's uh, response to moving your jaw into a different position. As dental appliances that help manage snoring and sleep apnea rely on your mandible to be into a more forward posture. So the pharyngometer and rhinometer, they operate by way of acoustic reflection, similar to how bats fly, the sonar, reflecting off the, the uh, walls of the, your throat that measures uh, the size of our airway. So for this type of evaluation, are x-rays necessary? Uh, x-rays are a very important part of the evaluation to help determine the stability of the bone, the health of the roots, the health of the dentition. You want to have a healthy foundation just as you would with uh, building your own house. You need to start good from the ground up. So it's really important to get uh, an x-ray evaluation, we use a, a cone beam CT scan in our office that not only evaluates the condition of the teeth and the bone in the jaw, also evaluates the health of the TMJ and the size and the anatomy of the airway. So as a dentist, how do you know whether an appliance will work or not, or, or is it just guesswork? Well, in our office, we use the pharyngometer to evaluate the patient's airway. We have them protrude their jaw into different postures or different positions and the size of the airway is measured out on a computer screen and so we search for that optimum size and optimum increase in the size of the airway by using the pharyngometer to help guide us. Finally, if a patient you're seeing does have some TMJ issues, does that mean that they can't have a sleep appliance? Uh, we need to consider the fact that they have a TMJ issue. We need to move slowly in regard to uh, titrating or adjusting their nighttime sleep appliance, but that doesn't uh, eliminate that as a possibility. We can, most patients use uh, a sleep appliance even though they have TMJ issues, and in some cases, uh, their TMJ issue can resolve itself by way of wearing a nighttime sleep appliance. My guest has been Dr. Larry Pribble with the Center for TMJ and Sleep Apnea in Independence, Missouri. Dr. Pribble, thank you again. Thank you very much. I'm Scott Drake and you're watching Sleep Better TV.